In this video, we are going to be solving the elite code question, min stack. We are going to be implementing a min stack of our own. But in order to understand a min stack, we have to understand how a regular stack works. A regular stack works very similar to a canister of tennis balls. If you've ever played tennis, tennis balls come in a can that looks like this. And it makes the coolest noise when you open it, and it smells really good. I highly suggest you try it one day. But this can of tennis balls functions very similar to a stack because you cannot grab the bottom tennis ball out of a tennis canister. There's a piece of plastic blocking you. If you want to get to the bottom tennis ball, you have to remove the tennis balls one by one. And when you put tennis balls into a tennis canister, you must place them in this fashion. But how exactly are we going to implement a min stack? Well, first things first, we're going to make a regular stack. A regular stack is going to allow us to place data into the stack just as we saw before, just like the tennis canister. If I want to place a four into a stack, I place it in there and if I want to place a one in, I place it on top of the four and I must get them out in that fashion. But a min stack is not going to be that much different. When we implement a min stack, what we're going to do is we're going to have a node like structure that's going to hold two elements. And when we add this node like structure, we are going to run the math.min and this is going to keep track of the minimum value for us. The minimum value is just the smallest number in the stack. And if we input a four and we run math.min, our min's going to be four because there's no other elements. But let's just say we want to add a one. What we're going to do is we're going to do the same dot we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to run math.min and this node's going to keep track of the new min, which is going to be one. And it's also going to keep track of the actual value. But let's just say we want to add a two. A two is obviously not the minimum. What we're going to do is we're going to do the same exact thing, but the math.min is going to pick up on this. It's going to know that two is not the min and it's going to keep this number one. And why is it going to do that? So that when we actually grab values out of here, so let's just say we want to grab this two out we can still keep track of the math.min in constant time. This is still going to be 01, and that's what leak code requires. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's hop into IntelliJ, and let's code this thing up. So we are inside of IntelliJ, and first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brand new class, and I'm going to call this min stack. So there are many ways to create a min stack. You could create a min stack with the actual stack that Java gives to you or the language that you are in that they give to you by default, but there is a danger in that. There is a danger because if you are asked to not use the stack, you're probably going to be screwed. So we're going to do it with a linked list. And the way that you do that is you just create a node. We're going to create a node within our min stack. And just like a linked list, we're going to have an int.val. We're going to have a min. So our node is also going to keep track of our min for us. And we're going to have our node.next. That's going to point to the next value within the node. Next thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to create a structure. And we need to go into here. We also need to add the node.next. Then we're going to go ahead and create our initialization values. And that's pretty much it. So with any type of linked list, we also need to keep track of the head. So we're going to go up here. We're going to go ahead, initialize our node. We're going to keep track of the head through the property. Many ways you could do that, but just the way that I'm going to do it. Also, the leak code question requires you to have an empty constructor. So make sure not to forget that. The leak code question also, instead of int x, they call this int val. So make sure that you have the parameters the same or it might error out. So if the head is null, we're just going to take our head and we're going to add a new node to it. 
we're going to add our value twice because there's no other men to even be concerned about and there's nothing else to point to and we're going to make that null next thing that we're going to do we're going to call this uh or we're going to have an else and this is going to be if we actually have other values within our min stack so we're going to say new node we're going to pass in the value of course but here's what we're going to do our min we're going to say math.min we're going to check the value and we're also going to check the other min remember check the other min and we're also going to have this new node point to the old head so next thing we're going to do we're going to pop the pops going to be very easy the rest of these methods are incredibly easy to implement they're pretty much one line we also have to have the top the head is going to return the head.val and we're also going to have the get min and the only thing that we have to do is just return the minimum of the head so that's pretty much it <clears throat> let's go ahead grab all this and toss this into leak code make sure that we have uh, a one for everything and I'm going to need to go ahead and minimize this. So I'm going to go ahead, bring over leak code, get rid of all this in here. Go ahead, toss that in. Go ahead, run our test, hit the submit button. Everything comes out fine, but we need to make sure our time complexity is good. So our time complexity is constant and our memory is N. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.